I would like for you, as the committee is getting to know you, know something about your service in Vietnam and your combat experience. Were you wounded, Senator Hagel? I would uh, respond this way. I, uh, I uh, think my time is better served to maybe talk uh, about more of the specific things like uh, Senator McCain asked me about. I had one fundamental question that I asked myself on every vote I took, every decision I made. Uh, was the policy worthy of the men and women that we were sending into battle and surely to their deaths? I did question a surge. It wasn't an aberration to me uh, ever. Uh, I always ask the question, is this going to be worth the sacrifice? Because there will be sacrifice. Let's bring into the conversation now Joseph Sorencioni. He is president of the Plowshares Fund, the Global Security Foundation. He's also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, and he is our go-to expert on nukes. Joe, thanks very much for being here. My pleasure, Rachel. I specifically want to get your take on one issue that was broached today at the hearing over Senator Hagel, where both sides did not seem to be talking about the same thing. Here's a quick clip. Senator Hagel has also been an outspoken supporter of the nuclear disarmament and the global zero movement. Why would we want to unilaterally disarm ourselves of nuclear capability? The position of global zero, my position, uh, some of the individuals, uh, national security leaders that Senator Nunn talked about, uh, including himself, has never been unilateral disarmament, ever, never. Joe, what are they fighting about here? Yeah, it's, the, Senator Hagel is exactly right. This is not about unilaterally taking apart our nuclear arsenal. Nobody is suggesting that. It's about reducing it. It's about adjusting our nuclear arsenal to the realities of the 21st century world. And the target of the conservative attacks on Senator Hagel was not actually Hagel himself today. It was President Obama. Because Senator Hagel's positions are identical to those of President Obama, Vice President Biden, the Secretary of State Kerry, in fact, the vast majority of the security establishment in the United States, that we are stuck with an obsolete arsenal of nuclear weapons that have little relevance to the threats we face today of cybersecurity, of nuclear terrorism, of unrest in the Middle East. And every dollar that we're spending on these nuclear weapons is taking money away from the troops, preventing us from giving them the weapons that they really need. These senators are stuck in a position of defending a 20th century arsenal that has little relevance in today's world. And hearing them read the talking, their talking points about this today, awkwardly read these talking points as if they do not come naturally to them and they have been told to read them. What <laughs> it made yeah. me feel like, the reason I wanted you to hear Inhofe say it, how awkwardly he said it, yeah. is because it makes me wonder what constituencies these senators are speaking for who believe that reducing the size of the yeah. nuclear weapons arsenal, uh, you know, would be a bad thing, who thinks our 5,000th nuclear bomb is making us more safe than our 4,999th. Who are uh, they speaking for? Th th that's exactly right. Well, there was a very awkwardness about the questioning, yeah. and some of them, some of them clearly did not grasp the, the, the strategic situation that they're debating. It's, I never thought I'd say this, but I miss John Kyle. Senator <laughs> Kyle was a fierce defender of the weapons establishment, a fierce defender of every contract, every bomb. He wanted to build more nuclear weapons, but he knew what he was talking about. And you didn't get that sense, seriously, from anyone who was doing the question on, on, on nuclear policy today. Some of these uh, representatives, senators are representing defense contractors. They want to keep the bases in their states. They want to keep the contracts. Some of them are just trying to score a political point to attack the president as weak and naive and dangerous and even treasonous, as you just suggested. But many of them are just stuck in this Cold War mentality, and they can't break out of it. It's not just bayonets and battleships. It's nuclear weapons have a decreasing uh, relevance to the threats we face today. But here you have these these senators from, from the conservative
conservative wing of the party still clinging to this Cold War arsenal, this Cold War threat. And so when they see somebody like Chuck Hagel, who's willing to question assumptions, who's, a, who's thinking anew, who wants to, to state, you know, what exactly will we use a nuclear weapon for? How many do we need? Can we do with 400? Do we really need, as you say, 5,000? That's very threatening to them, and you saw that on, on, on display today. In terms of how they fit into broader conservative politics on this, isn't it true that more sort of establishment leading lights of Republican foreign policy are much closer to Chuck Hagel on this? I mean, they've tried to make global zero into some communist thing, but aren't there a lot of big name Republicans associated with that? Uh, absolutely. So outside the Senate, when you go and you look at particularly former Republican officials on this. Colin Powell, completely with this agenda. Uh, George Shultz, completely with this agenda. Henry Kissinger has joined Shultz and former Secretary Bill Perry and Sam Nunn, two Democrats, in, in leading the charge for a world free of, of new nuclear weapons, part of the inspiration for President Obama's strategy. You see former chairman of the Joint Chiefs siding with this, former, ch former leaders of the Strategic Command. They recognize we don't need 5,000 nuclear weapons anymore. We can go to much lower numbers. The President of the United States is clearly on a path to doing that, and part of what you saw today was shots across the bow trying to stop President Obama from continuing to modernize U.S. Uh, nuclear strategy to reduce the cost and the expense and the saliency of this obsolete arsenal. Politically, I th it will be amazing if the Republican Party decides they want to go all Curtis LeMay on this issue, but I almost welcome it. Uh, Joe Serencioni, president of the Plowshares Fund. Joe, it is always great to have you here. Thanks a lot. Man. Thank you very much, Thanks. Rachel. All right. Republicans uh, have gotten around recently to saying that they have a problem attracting women voters. What they are actually doing about that problem will not help with that problem. Details ahead.